Hi, my name is Dave Tuffley and I'm going to tell you about a process called self-actualization. What better thing could there be than to undertake a process that will lead you to become the fullest expression of your human potential? This is called self-actualization. Now, some of you might recognize the work here of the humanistic psychologist Abraham Maslow. This video describes the characteristics of a self-actualizing person uh, in a way that will help you emulate it in your own life. Now, self-actualization was thought by Maslow to be a human need, something that everyone comes to once they have sorted out the more basic aspects of their life. Maslow's perhaps best known for describing a hierarchy of human needs. The hierarchy is represented as a pyramid with the basic needs shown at the pyramid's broad base and with self-actualization as the capstone on the apex. A self-actualized person has found a way to satisfy all of his or her lower needs and has cultivated the conscious awareness of their own fullest potential. And this becomes their guiding light. So the need for self-actualization asserts itself once we've satisfied the lowest order needs for food, shelter, sex, then the middle order needs for safety and security, and then the higher middle order needs for love and belonging. Above these is the higher order need for self-esteem. Then highest of all is the need for self-actualization, sitting like a capstone on the pyramid's peak. Self-actualized people, or SA people hereafter, whoever they are, whatever the circumstances of their lives, they tend to approach life in characteristic ways. And uh, this is what I'll be talking about in this video. So what are the characteristics of self-actualized people? Well, this video paints a detailed portrait of the self-actualized person, one that you can model yourself after in your own way. It doesn't prescribe any specific behavior. It doesn't give you a blueprint. Rather, it paints a portrait. Because there can be no one-size-fits-all approach to this. It has to be unique and tailored for each individual. So your challenge is to make the effort to understand each of the characteristics here and to find a way of applying it in your own life. In this way, it becomes part of who you are. It becomes integrated into your sense of self. It's entirely authentic. This process is likely to take years, so it's important to adjust your expectations. On the plus side, uh, there can be no more rewarding journey than the one that leads uh, to achieving your fullest potential. You could say that doing this is the purpose of life itself. The first characteristic of SA people is that they experience life wholeheartedly in the now. SA people throw themselves unreservedly into all of the experiences that come their way, the good, the bad, and the ugly. They don't hold back. They concentrate on the experience that they're having now and do this to the exclusion of all else. They don't think, oh, this could be better, or I wish I was somewhere else, or this really shouldn't be happening to me now. No, they see each moment as being perfect in its own way. And recognizing this allows the SA person to then experience the moment wholeheartedly. 
In other words, they come to see every moment as being the best moment. See it from an investment point of view. We all know that we get out of a situation only as much as we're prepared to put into that situation in the first place. By investing fully in the moment, you're rewarded in equal measure and this heightens the experience you have tremendously. If you're familiar with the principles of Buddhism, uh, you'll recognize uh, the practice of mindfulness here. With mindfulness, uh, you're fully present in the now moment. And the goal is to experience every moment as the best moment. The concept tra uh, translates well, very well, into Maslow's idea of self-actualization. Mindfulness is cultivated by observing your mind. It leads you to dwell in the present, which is really the only time and place where life can actually be experienced. The past can only be remembered. The future can only be anticipated. Neither of them is real in the way that the present moment is real. An important element of this present moment awareness is to have a judgment-free mindset, a lack of judgment, because judgment creates categories. It imposes values on situations. We can get so lost in those uh, thought processes around judgment that we are no longer experiencing the reality of the moment. Rather, we're experiencing a uh, tangled mental construct that often makes very little sense. So being fully aware, SA people understand that life is a series of moment-by-moment -moment choices. It's a choice between safety and risk. Safety out of fear and the need for defense, and risk for the sake of progress and, and growth. You only grow when you're prepared to take a risk and take yourself out of the comfort zone that you've become accustomed to be in. The SA person consciously makes the choice that leads to growth many times a day. Next is, the SA person has their prime reality as their rich inner life. What is going on inside them is their primary reality. What happens outside is their secondary reality. SA people transcend socially defined ways of thinking and ways of feeling and acting too. They let their inner experience tell them what they truly feel. They usually don't follow the opinion of the crowd, not having much faith in the collective wisdom of the individually ignorant. Well, as harsh as that might sound, uh, groupthink usually resides at the lowest common denominator, and it's really something that uh, should be avoided. SA people live rich inner lives, which they recognize as their primary reality. The outer world is a secondary reality. So they tend to socialize with uh, those people who do not demand sacrifice to group norms as the price of belonging. They socialize with people who allow them or encourage them to be authentically themselves. The need for social acceptance and a sense of belonging can lead people to think and act in conventional, group-defined ways. To gain the security of belonging to a group, you usually have to sacrifice your independence of thought, your autonomy. Sacrifice these to group norms. But the SA people, uh, person, uh, goes beyond groupthink and the need for social acceptance. 
recognizing that such acceptance is a method of control used by society. Society reinforces behavior through approval and limits other behavior through disapproval. Approval and disapproval are two sides of the same coin. Uh, the essay person likes to get along with people, but they acknowledge also uh, that what was once correct in the past may not, in fact, be correct now. The world has changed, and uh, with it, new ways are needed so that society can evolve. Essay people are honest with themselves. It takes courage, but SA people look honestly at themselves and take responsibility for who and what they are and for what happens in their life because they've come to see what they, uh, they've come to see that there are cause and effect links between what they did in the past and what is happening to them now. Likewise, they proactively create the kind of future that they want for themselves by doing what is needed now in order to create that future, in order to cause that future to come about. By taking responsibility like this, the essay person feels empowered and in control of their lives. They do not feel like a victim. Delusion is the enemy of self-actualization. Delusion tends to cause suffering, uh, but so many people in the world around us operate exactly like this. Just look around at the world. It's, it's rare to find people who don't use delusion as a coping mechanism to some extent. But essay people, uh, they recognize that delusion is ultimately self-defeating uh, and so they are brutally honest with themselves. SA people also have a superior reasoning ability. Uh, they're able to see the truth. They're realistically oriented uh, with an efficient perception of reality uh, that extends into all areas of their life. They're not frightened by the unknown. SA people see the truth of the world. Uh, they recognize the flawed and temporary nature of objects uh, and ideas and the various structures in the world around them. They clearly see the cause and effect relationships that connect the events of the world and they use this understanding to create the kind of life that they want for themselves and the people around them. The essay person listens to their own tastes. They're prepared to be unpopular if necessary. Uh, as I mentioned just before, the need for social acceptance can lead a person to compromise their principles for the sake of getting along with people, with the rest of the world. But SA people understand that while compromise on minor issues is often necessary, even unavoidable, there really is a line that must not be crossed. SA people are true to themselves. SA people know themselves. They ask themselves the deep questions of, well, who am I? What am I? What is good and what is bad? Where am I going? What is my purpose in life? By opening yourself up in this way, uh, you, you must, you come to recognize where your defense mechanisms and your blockages are. Once you've recognized them, you can take steps to deal with them. It just remains to find the courage to give them up. Next, SA people accept the world as it is. They see human nature for what it really is. They come to terms with it. They know that it can't be changed. It can't be changed through wishful thinking by wishing people were different. 
they've rid themselves of the painful memories from the past. Whether the essay person has hurt others or have been hurt by others, they make amends and they resolve to, to never repeat that behaviour. They know that unresolved guilt and shame is uh, like a cancer that eats away at their character. By living in the now moment, it helps them to leave the past behind and not to keep reliving it every day. SA people enjoy themselves without regret or apology and have no un unnecessary inhibitions. They have realistic or low expectations, so they are rarely disappointed. SA people are original thinkers. They are unorthodox. They're unhampered by convention, unrestricted by convention. Their ethics are autonomous. They see themselves as individuals and are motivated towards continuous improvement. Uh, SA people respond to situations appropriately because they perceive the situation clearly and they act accordingly, not by replaying a standard response from their behavioural repertoire based on previous learning. SA people have a sense of purpose and gratitude. They have a mission in life and it requires much energy to fulfil that mission. Their mission is really their reason to live. It gets them out of bed in the morning. It gives them enthusiasm. But they're serene and worry-free as they pursue their mission with an unshakable determination. The SA person's sense of purpose uh, comes to inform almost every aspect of their life. It's their reason to carry on and to keep going. It keeps them hard at work all day, uh, though they probably wouldn't even call it work since uh, it's what they would be doing anyway, regardless of whether they needed the money. SA people often feel a deep sense of gratitude for being alive in the world with the skills that they possess and the potential and the opportunity to use those skills to their best effect. Gratitude is a force of nature and it has a powerfully transformative effect on those who practice it. Gratitude acknowledges the many good things already in your life and it creates the conditions for more good things to come in. The good things come because they're appreciated and there's room for them. On the other hand, the person who complains about what they have or don't have is really closing the door to further gifts. It's like saying, well, I don't like what I have. Bring me something better. Sounding uh, like a petulant restaurant pa patron. So this is the carpe diem principle, the seize the day principle. Living each day as if it were your last day whilst working towards a long and happy future. SA people are private. The SA person is alone but not lonely. Solitude is, is often their preference because in the silence, they can hear that small voice in the back of their mind, the voice of their intuition, which tells them all sorts of interesting things. They're peaceful, they're calm, they retain their dignity, and uh, when people around them are confused and running around and making a lot of noise. The SA person is deeply introspective and intuitive, and for this, they require privacy. They need a peaceful place away from the crowd with its trivial preoccupations and its relentless gossip. The space that the SA person creates with their privacy is the space in which they can be creative, where they're able to listen to their creative instincts, or even you could call it their muse. 
If they're prevented from expressing their creative output, they can become very frustrated. SA people are autonomous. They're self-contained, resilient and stable in the face of hard knocks. They're independent from the love and respect of others. Uh, and they're independent in the sense that they can resist attempts to use these to manipulate them. Autonomy really does not mean being a law unto yourself. Rather, it means being the embodiment of natural law. And as such, the SA person does not need to look to some external authority to tell them how to act. The final characteristic is the tendency to have peak experiences, as Maslow called them. Peak experiences can be compared to becoming enlightened. In Maslow's words, he puts it this way, peak experiences are Quote, feelings of limitless horizons opening up to the vision, the feeling of being simultaneously more powerful and also more helpless than one has ever been before, the feeling of ecstasy and wonder and awe, the loss of placement in time and space, with Finally, the conviction that something extremely important and valuable has happened. Uh, so the person want, was to some extent transformed and strengthened even in their daily life by such experiences. When peak experiences are especially powerful, Maslow says, the sense of self dissolves into an awareness of a greater unity. This is fabulous stuff. This agrees with the uh, description of what enlightenment is. Enlightenment is said to be the uh, felt sense of connectedness and interconnectedness with all things. Peak experiences are the transcending of ordinary consciousness in which you've been accustomed to seeing yourself as being separate from the world. It's a state of mind in which you see yourself and everything around you as being fully interconnected. It's blissful. It's the feeling of being one with all things. So while you can't order peak experiences on demand, you can nonetheless create the right conditions within yourself for peak experiences to occur. The characteristics that I've described in this video tell you what those conditions are. It doesn't prescribe a particular way of going about this. Uh, to do so would be to limit your freedom to act and it would inhibit your autonomy. If you're watching this video, you're more than capable of finding your own way of doing these things. In the end, your own unique way is really the only way you should do it. So that's it. Look for the link below. Uh, you can read more about this. Uh, there's an ebook that explains all about it. I'm Dave Tuffley. Thanks for watching this video and all the very best to you in your search.